Okay, one of the things that you will hear a lot about if you have a diagnosis of diabetes, uh, there's two words, hyper, which is high, and hypo, which is low, glycemia. Glycemia is just to do with your blood sugar level. Um, I'll probably use a lot of hand gestures like this because high is high and low is low and you want to actually try and find the balance in the middle where you're safe and functional, everything's working well. Now hypoglycemia, think O, hypo is low, is when you've got either too much insulin or too little sugar. Um, typically, most people feel symptoms. It's pretty much an insulin overdose, but because it's part of the rest of your body, there's other bits going on as well. Because your body is basically reacting to a threat, you might get a bit of adrenaline being kicked out as well. So some of the symptoms you can even put down to adrenaline as opposed to just the insulin overdose, but what you will feel probably is shaky, a bit confused, um, a little bit uncoordinated. Some people get a bit sweaty. Some people see, have, uh, they can see their, their eyes go a bit funny. They can usually tell, they'll be looking at something and think that, oh, you know, I can notice it, it's not quite right. Now, the best thing possible is if you keep your blood testing kit with you is to do a blood test to be certain that you have found yourself going into hypo. There's just a chance that you could be confusing it. Um, a hypo could be confused with feeling very nervous about something, for example. Again, it's that similar feeling of adrenaline kicking in. Um, having said that, when you're having a hypo, doing a blood test can be rather tricky. In fact, I usually know if I'm having a hypo because I'm trying to do all this, you're trying to get the strips in, and if you sort of end up throwing the thing away and hit, it hitting a wall, it's because you're just losing it. Um, the other factor with adrenaline and insulin is you can get very short-tempered and snappy, um, and that can be another sign. It's important that you can learn to recognise your symptoms, and it's important, really, that you can keep having your symptoms if you spend an awful lot of time having hypos, you might actually start losing your sensitivity to those symptoms. And one of the other things that's really helpful is for the people around you, do them a favour and let them know that you have diabetes and that if certain things start to happen, they can be part of the help to get you out of your hypo. All you'll really need is some sugar in whatever form possible. Um, liquids, sometimes easier than having to chew if you're having a bad hypo. Um, bad, anything under, when you do a blood test, anything under four would be very, very borderline, but by the time you're 3.8, you're definitely having a hypo. And effectively, the lower you go, the more sugar you're going to need to pull yourself up, and it also might, might make a bit more time to come back up. Um, so you want, you want to address the hypo as soon as you can. Once you've had diabetes quite a long time and you've had quite a lot of hypos, I mean, they are inevitable, you will get them. Uh, the real issue is to try not to have too many, and when you do have them, try not to have really major ones, and to always be prepared and have some sugar handy. Uh, the people around you might be able to say, you know, you're acting a bit funny, or you're looking a bit shaky, and that those can be the people that help to tell you if you're going a bit wobbly, if you're not picking, picking up the symptoms yourself. Obviously, I've been using the phrase feeling a bit wobbly, it's very commonly used. So not everyone says, I'm feeling hypo or I'm going into hypo. And I don't know anyone who uses hypoglycemia. Uh, wobbly, dizzy, uh, we all have our own ways of describing it. Um, but try not to overdo it when you have a hypo. Your body, once your body is recovered and getting into sort of recovery situation, it too will start kicking out sugars. So you don't need to overdo it. The main thing you need is to try and keep your head if you can and sit down and take some time. It should take about 15, 20 minutes to adjust your sugar levels, or at least pull you away from a hypo. Um, if you, you, you certainly need to be very careful. If you're driving, you should have tested before you drive to avoid the possibility of having a hypo. But if you happen to be driving, you shouldn't really be blood testing at the wheel. You should pull over and do a blood test. And if you are having a hypo, treat it and wait at least 15 minutes. You should wait until your sugars are up to at least five again. As far as treating it is concerned, you can keep things that either don't go off, don't melt, um, you know, and are just available. They can be in your bag, they can be in a desk, a school desk, an office desk, can be in a glove compartment. 
And the only thing you have to remember to do is if you use one when you're having a hypo, replace it so that next time you need one, there is one there.